Hello everybody, my name is Mehdi, and I'm going to talk about an idea today. Uh, ideas are as important as projects and other stuff discussed here. The idea is about Genome Sync, that some of you might have voted for this on conference. The idea is just being able to sync your experience and have the similar experience on multiple different computers. Yeah, that's the main goal, to transfer your experience from one computer to the other one. So it's like uh, sitting behind this computer, I have the same experience, a lot of the stuff are going on here, my setups, and just go over another one and try it over there. The first one is, what's the reason behind having, or in my idea, dismissing part of genome experience. I think this is missing. It's something uh, nice to have. I have personally multiple computers. I have a computer at office, one at home, one Raspberry Pi, two small chip computers, two laptops. So all this stuff should have operating system and I need to move my experience from one to the other one. So I keep installing software all the time. I just... Uh, in the office, at home, I just keep installing, I forget the extensions, I have to check how did I install it last time or find it from software center and install it again. But I think all this experience could be automated if you just add a new part to, to GNOME desktop. And one major component, one major reason uh, is that computers are cheap. So. In the past, they were expensive. People were not able to have multiple computers, so they were stuck with one of them. So there was not actually need to create such a thing. But today, as I mentioned earlier, it's possible to have multiple of them. Okay. So also, one can also remember everything or make create a backup, but of course it's just for emergency cases when you just lose your desktop or something goes wrong, you just uh, can reuse it. But having sync means that you can use multiple computers at the same time. If you change something at the office, it will change also. When you arrive at home, it's just there. If you install a new, if, if you find and install a new extension, GNOME shell extension at work, it's nice, okay, I, I'll insert it there, you go home, it's there. You just turn on your computer, you find the extension right there. Or if you change key bindings, they will be synced to the server. When you go to home, you will have the same key bindings there. So you don't need to repeat yourself everywhere. So as it, one important uh, aspect of synchronization is understanding the metadata. Just, it was discussed earlier today regarding app streams, if I'm not mistaken. With adding a metadata file to every package, now it's possible to search them and find them in GNOME shell search and having reviews attached to those descriptors and similar stuff, all with having metadata. So. We can also have metadata for other components of the operating uh, of the desktop, like for meta for extensions and install software, key bindings, and also a, a metadata specification for the desktop itself to be able to replicate it on another machine. So these four things that I have just written here are Genome core app settings which I think this idea should focus on them. The key bindings, shell extensions, and software that we install through Software Center. It's as important to understand as the definition itself, to know what a GNOME Sync experience cannot be or is not. First of all, it's not a backup solution. For backup, there are better solutions. One doesn't need it to, to backup his desktop or her desktop use on a synchronization server. And it's not for arbitrary application. It's very important because it keeps the definition of 
this idea clear and makes it focus on the right things to synchronize, it's not possible to synchronize the settings and data files of many, many different softwares on, on, one, uh, on one machine, or on one, uh, one Linux machine, because it's too complicated. So it's important to mention that the Genome Sync should be focused on the Genome core apps, not any arbitrary app. And it's not about backing up the app data, but the app metadata, like which extension is installed. But if you change, if extension stores data and changes it over time, it should be handled separately. It, otherwise, I think it would be impossible to create a reliable syncing solution. There are a number of similar programs out there that could give a better understanding of this experience. One which uh, is very famous is Chrome. You just log into Chrome, you have all your extensions, then you have your passwords, you have your history, you have everything that is stored on the sync server. So everything will be synced back onto your computer. I have personally multiple Chrome instances. So at office, at home, on multiple machines, I just have my hardware key, I just attach it, I log in, I have the whole experience. It's very, very productive. In a matter of minutes, I'm super productive again. It doesn't matter if it's a new computer. I can follow even my work, what I have been doing maybe on, the, on another machine. But there is a drawback with using Chrome. Chrome hardly allows you to set up your custom synchronization server. It's almost impossible and the developers are not helpful as according to my experience. They, they have one outdated script that creates a server and it's only usable with Chromium, which is of course Chromium is the open source base for Chrome, but they don't like, somehow they don't like that people use third party synchronization server instead of Google ones. Another one is Firefox. Firefox also allows us to synchronize our experience. We can just sign, sign into Firefox Sync and then we have extension metadata, passwords, and other information synchronized to Firefox Sync servers. Firefox allows us to change its configuration to introduce our own server and the developer and the website Help, uh, our developers are very helpful and the, uh, the website has information that allows the user to set up their own synchronization server. You can even have a synchronization server at your company, at home, or for, uh, for the family. And then with just changing the configuration file from about config in Firefox, it's possible to introduce a new synchronization server. It's that easy. Then the Firefox will sync itself with that server. No data will go to Mozilla servers. The other very familiar experience is about Android. In Android, we just, if you use your Google account, I have experience only with Google account, then the whole experience will be replicated on a new device. We could have multiple devices. Then the apps, even their data, and many other aspects of the operating system will be synced on multiple devices. So it makes it super easy. You just buy a new phone, you log in, you have the whole experience there. The other one is Chrome OS. So Chrome OS is an OS, you just log in, everything is in the cloud, not on the desktop, but it still is somehow similar. Other one which I just learned about it today is Conduit, which is about synchronizing app data. It's not about synchronizing the whole desktop experience, it's only about synchronizing one application to some destination application, like FSPOT to uh, Facebook or something, I don't remember. Uh, I also found an outdated proposal to have Genome Sync on Gnome Wiki. But the problem, I wanted to edit that one, but then I decided to go for a new proposal. But it's a still draft. I have not published it. It's mostly in my mind, not on the website. But the problem with that uh, proposal is that it's not clear and focused. It just 
about, it's about synchronizing everything, but it's not possible to synchronize everything. We have to pick the right components to synchronize, the, the parts that are easy, and decide what to synchronize and what not to synchronize, because it's very important. It keeps it limited, then the problem is simple, it's possible to create simple solutions for it. Otherwise, it would be complicated, and the project will, will remain at the end. It doesn't reach anywhere at the end. I believe that having crystal clear goals and limited scope is very helpful. We had also today this talk about software center, which is really enjoyed. They have also similar parts like synchronizing ratings and reviews on some servers and the metadata, which is possible to download metadata and access it in programmatically, which shares some common properties. There is also security, which is very important, of course. In, at least in Firefox case, Everything is encrypted on user's machine using, using, user can define a password. Of course, when you log into sync, you must define a password and everything will be encrypted. So data will re, uh, leave user's laptop or computer encrypted and then it will be decrypted using the password. So it's similar to IDEA, uh, similar to Firefox. So it was very short talk because I just compiled it put together everything right here today. Uh, and thank you for listening. If you have any question, I will take it.